We've all been to the golf stores. We've all wandered aimlessly around the aisles as we see training aid after training aid, 10 different styles and colors and shapes and ways to hold the ball on top of the tee. In this episode, we're going to get to it. We're going to get to what you really need in your golf bag. What are the golf necessities that you need with you week in and week out to play your best golf? Golf is not that hard. Well, it doesn't have to be. That's why we cut through all the highbrow golf BS to give you what you really need to know to enjoy the golfing experience. I'm Doug Smith. And I'm Cheyenne Woods. And together we have over 50 years experience playing the game of golf at every level. Every week we'll break down a new topic in 10 minutes or less, answering some of the most popular questions in golf today. You're welcome. Welcome back. Today, we're talking about golf necessities. And Doug, as you mentioned, it is overwhelming going to some of these golf stores and walking up and down these aisles. What do people even really need? Is this just extra stuff to waste your money on? Oh, you know, it's funny. I think everybody is so different as it relates to what they carry with them and what they don't carry with them. I want to talk to you a little bit because what you might carry in your bag, Cheyenne, like going from tour event week in and week out might be different than the average amateur. I do travel a majority of the year playing competitive golf, but I do think also it's a myth that what I'm carrying in my bag is any different than the average amateur is carrying in their bag. I carry what I absolutely need on the golf course. I don't want anything extra making my bag heavy. And so for me, my top three things that I need on the golf course, I would say sunscreen for sure. Because although I am half black, I definitely need to protect this skin. It does crack uh, (laughs) and it burns. It burns. I am brown, but I burn. Outside of sunscreen, Definitely need some lip balm, something to keep these lips moisturized, protected from the dry, the heat. Nobody wants those dry ass lips. Nobody wants those at all. That's not cute. Nobody. So sunscreen, chapstick, and snacks. Food is always important, whether you're on the course or off. I try to keep some protein bars, some fruit, some nuts, something to keep my energy levels up while I'm out on the course all day. Those are my three that are most important to me. Doug, what do what you think and what do you keep it in the golf bag? Right now, in my bag, um, I'm very keen on my alignment sticks, my range finder. I have to have my range finder nowadays, my distance measuring device, whatever you want to call it, and also my speaker. Now that I'm playing golf way more leisurely than competitive, you know, it's really nice to be out there jamming while I'm spinning around the golf course. So most of this stuff that you keep in your bag and are your necessities, do you take them out of the bag or are they specifically for golf, for going out and spending the day on the course? I'd look kind of weird if I was like in a grocery store in a social setting with my range finder. True. It's kind of awkward. Not, That's I'm just, true. I'm just saying. That's true. No, but if I was hunting, that'd be a different thing, right? We're true. Out, you could you use know, it. Or hiking, you see how far there. it is to that next pass. No, but range finder never comes out of the bag. Speaker, got to charge it. And, you know, I might have an impromptu barbecue to go to. So that speaker got to travel. Got to keep it ready. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be ready to go so I can push play at all times. For myself, as I mentioned, my three necessities. Those don't ever leave the bag. I have an extra set of sunscreen, chapstick, because I'm a forgetful person. And I'm going to forget to put it back in my bag if I take it out. So I need multiple sets everywhere I go. Outside of those, I would say something else that people might need in the golf bag is a first aid kit, whether it be Band-Aids, tape. You know, we're using our hands all day that you might need a little Band-Aid or tape to assist you out on the golf course. Trying to avoid those blisters because we all see that. You've all, we've all been practicing or we've, we've seen someone who is learning the game and they've got that death grip on the golf club and they get that, th- that thumb blister and it's like, you know, you might need some tape. Man, yes. The last thing you want is for that blister to pop mid-round, and then you hear the excuses that I hit my shot in the water because of this or that. So no excuses. Put a Band-Aid on and keep it moving. What else do you see? I see like training aids. Do you keep any training aids in your golf bag or do you keep them like on the side? I do. I have one particular training aid for putting that I take with me. It's just a very simple arc. I've never been a huge training aid person. Like your alignment sticks, I have those as well. Uh, And then the putting arc is really all I keep in the bag. Again, the bare necessities. I don't want to overcomplicate or weigh down my golf bag. You know, my putting mirror stays in the bag because if I'm traveling, if I'm in a hotel, it's something I can just throw down on the floor, double check my alignment, making sure I'm ready to roll the ball as soon as we tee it up the next day. Speaking of golf balls, everyone is different, you know, based on your playing level or your confidence. How many golf balls do you carry in your golf bag? I'm probably weird about golf balls. I I always have too many golf balls. I've heard stories of countless 
uh, players that have ran out of golf balls and had to withdraw from events. So I'm like, that's one of my things I'm actually kind of terrified about. I don't want to run out of golf balls. So I honestly, I keep three sleeves of balls. Wow. I keep three sleeves of brand new golf balls with me every round I play, every tournament round. I'm also notorious for switching balls. I'm not as keen on hitting fairways like some people in the room. I don't have a 94. uh, I don't hit 94% of the fairways when I play in events. So my balls get scratched up all the time from wedges to trees and cart paths. Unlike you, Miss Fairway Mayor's Office right here. You know, for me, Cheyenne, I might go through four balls around, even though you never miss a fairway. Do you go through balls that quickly or how many do you carry? For me, I... For some reason, six sticks with me. I keep six golf balls in my golf bag. I keep three marked, three unmarked. I don't know why. I just, you can do that when you don't miss fairways. Yeah, true. <laughs> you, can, you can do that. I don't. My balls don't get quite as beat up as yours, but uh, you know, <laughs> six is good for me. How often do you switch? Because th- there's some different kind of um, superstitions out there regarding right. golf balls. I right. know certain players on tour that won't switch a ball until they make a bogey. So they'll switch every bogey they make. So- I am not superstitious whatsoever. I generally don't change golf balls until I see it getting a little bit too beat up, whether it's a nick or the markers coming off, my marking on the balls coming off. So um, I'm very, I'm not particular whatsoever about switching my ball. Sometimes I'll play 18 holes with one golf ball. Sometimes I'll switch out after three holes. So it's very dependent on just how the ball looks. Let me ask you this. In this new society that we're living in, we're starting to see some pop culture and some various um, things work their way into golf. I want to mention something that could be taken a couple different ways. What do you think about the CBD oil that has been rumored to have surfaced on the PGA Tour? Is that something that we should be looking into, Shot? Is CBD even helping the golf game? How does this even work? Apparently, it's helpful. And I've heard from people that have used it that it does help them on the golf course. It is a benefit in just how their body is feeling. I personally have never tried it, but I do think it's something interesting that's kind of floating around in the golf industry right now and in society in general. So it is a good topic to kind of bring up, but we can keep our eye on and see how it plays out. You know, I'd like to hear from some of our listeners out there. Hey, if you're playing golf and you're using CBD oil, let us know the positives and the negatives that you're experiencing. Also hit us up about what your necessities are. Because we all know walking through those golf stores, it is very overwhelming. All of this junk thrown at you that you think you might need, might not need. They have those little brush tees, Doug, that yeah. do they even help? What is the point Apparently of that? Apparently you get four extra yards. Four. I don't, I don't okay. know. I because four yards is really going to make a difference. It's the difference between an eight iron and a choke quarter down eight iron. So Very I don't important. Know. It might might help you out. But I feel like I feel bad for amateurs out there who are walking in these stores and there's just so much gimmicky stuff mm-hmm. that is thrown at you that I mean, as a professional, I've been playing golf for 20 years of my life. I've never used this stuff before. And a lot of people get brainwashed into thinking that this tea is going to change my game. You know, I have a general rule of thumb. The, more, the simpler something is, the more likely it's going to work in golf. I think we all make golf so damn difficult. Golf is real, as we said, you know, It's really not that difficult until we put our own kind of opinion and we start to listen to others and then we find what works and then we hear somebody say what they think that works and then we try that and then it's this spiral. It's this endless siege of nothingness as we try to get better and get better. If something works for you, don't get rid of it. Now it's time to get technical and today Mm -hmm. we already brought up training aids. So, Doug, let's try to figure out how to use these most effectively and what is really important in using a training aid. When using a training aid, consistency, you know, bouncing from aid to aid and trying to fix something in multiple ways, it's really not the best use of your time if you're trying to get better at golf. I'd say stick with a core group of your training aids that you feel are making you better. If you've seen results using one training aid, then use it. Continue to use it. For me, I like putting aids, very simple putting aids, chalk line, string line, my putting mirror. Those are really the only things that I use when I'm putting, making sure my setup's correct, making sure my start line is correct. Also, my metronome. You can go on App Store, whatever phone you have, and get a metronome app that you can put it at whatever beats per minute, and so you can just stay on rhythm. If your rhythm's too fast, find a a beat that you like, a a beat number, beats per minute, or however the hell metronomes measure time, and find one that works for you and consistently work on that rhythm. What I found is most important is really buckling down on the fundamentals. For myself, it's alignment. Alignment sticks, whether it be on the range or even on the putting green. I want to make 
make sure my setup is consistent, I'm aligned to where I need to be, and that helps me get my game where it needs to be. Some of these training aids are so simple and easy to get. The Metronome is a free app. And the alignment sticks you can get at any hardware store, super accessible, and these are things that will immediately have an effect on your game in a positive way. And that's it for this week's episode of Birdies Not BS. Be sure to follow us on all the socials, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can find us at Birdies Not BS. And BirdiesNotBS.com, we are here to answer your questions.